Economic inequality between men and women is at its highest since the financial crisis. That's according to a new report from the World Economic Forum. The WEF reckons things have got even worse for women than they have for men, in particular in terms of how they're treated at work and in terms of education. It comes after women in Iceland walked out of work at 2.38 on Monday afternoon this week, as that's when they claim they stopped getting paid for the same amount of work as men in a year. So let's take a closer look at the statistics. The WEF claims that efforts to close the gender gap in pay have been dramatically slow and could take up to 170 years to eradicate completely. Globally, women are being paid almost half that of men and have to work on average 50 minutes more every day. That means an additional eight days a year without pay. And they also have a lower chance of reaching senior positions in companies and are mainly employed in lower skilled jobs such as administration. Well, for more insight on this, Dr. Katrin Olifstotter joins us live now from Copenhagen. She's an assistant professor of economics at Reykjavik University in Iceland. Doctor, many thanks for joining us here on TRT World. Uh, how is it that in 2016 we're still looking at such staggering levels of inequality between men and women? Well, that's a very good question, and there's not a one simple answer to that. We don't really know how come uh, this is taking so slow. I mean, the legal environment is there. Uh, in most countries, in most at least Western countries, there is completely inequality in terms of, of uh, the legal legal system. And uh, by law, men and women should be paid the same, but it's just not the reality of it. I mean, quite apart from changing attitudes on uh, a global level, a lot of this does still anchor itself in supposedly in the Western developed world, doesn't it? In places where, as you say, we do have these legal uh, guards to try and make sure that uh, legally men and women are equal. But attitudes changing even within those countries are quite difficult, aren't they? Yes, it has to do with what we call the unconscious bias, where we inadvertently judge men and women differently, um, often not consciously, but uh, we do tend to look at or evaluate women's work and men's work at, on very different scales. Do you think there are more concrete steps that we could be taking then on a global, national, perhaps even local level to try and change these outside of just educating men and women about these unconscious biases? Well, there are people. Well, there are different things that are, are being tried at, at different levels, and one of them is the education and, and sort of trying to understand uh, where the unconscious bias stems from. But they're also uh, trying to set up uh, sort of uh, measurements in terms of within companies, are uh, how are you evaluating the jobs that are being made, mm -hmm. and sort of trying to certify countries or, or companies as to whether they're paying men and women the same. So. In a sense, you get sort of a quality label uh, and that you can use to promote your company worldwide. So, uh, but there's very little experience on, on mm. those and, and we don't know if they work or not. And, and just quickly, Doctor, out of all of the statistics, I think one of the most arresting is this idea that it's going to take 170 years to finally uh, find ourselves in a world with equality between men and women. Can you just paint a picture of how much that would benefit everybody in the world? What would that world look like? Well, a world where men and women are, are, are valued the same, we could have a higher level of living in, in every single country. There are studies that show that there would be more uh, higher uh, level of GDP if, if men and women are, are uh, contributing equally in, in the labor market. And so it's, uh, it's an economic thing that we could all be doing better if, if uh, we were better at, at evaluating men and women's jobs and, and evaluating them at the same level. OK, well, Dr. Katrina Olivstotter, we will hope, of course, for uh, something close to approaching equality this time next year. Many thanks for joining us.